Take a bet. Is he gonna cry or is he not gonna cry? <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me show you how this is correctly done. <laughs> it's like watching TV, isn't it? <laughs> well, are we gonna start? Oh, oh wait, wait, I start first, right? Um, Number one, thank you all for coming out tonight in this beautiful setting. I'm just um, overwhelmed. Um, tonight, for me, this is a prayer of thanksgiving. So if you could all open your hymnals. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Page, page 54, Psalm number 91.3. You <laughs> recognize this one. This is the one with the secret chord. It's the one that David wrote to, pr to please the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood a beautiful day for a neighbor would you be mine could you be mine won't you be my neighbor wait it's gonna get a lot worse <laughs> maestro I don't know if anybody knows that there's a second verse. It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> So, if you like that, I can tell you that um, Chris and Julie and I, we're going to be doing, um, do you have to go potty? And let's count to 10. We'll be out at Bella Piano's out by the airport. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I am overwhelmed. This is such a nice party. I want to say thank you to WQLN's incredible staff. If you're here and you could give a woohoo, that would be great. Woohoo! Thank you for this amazing, amazing evening. I am forever grateful for your hard work, your skill, and your good cheer. I can't say enough good things about you, but if I may, you're all Cary Grant and Eva Marie Saint. You're a cold pilsner in July, great pie in the fall. You're a malt, you're blue suede shoes. In short, I think you're perfect. The staff's hard work is self-evident. All you have to do is look around here WQLN is debt free. We have an endowment to be proud of. We have an Emmy nominated weekly history series. Um, and our radio station is now rated number two in the market. Now, folks, I'm not talking about that uh, very sexy 65 plus demographic. No, I'm talking about 12 plus, number two, and that is unheard of for public radio. But best of all, this team, the team that you heard whoop a little bit earlier, they've got a solid plan for moving forward to WQLN's digital future. That digital future is an industry flip-flop from traditional broadcasting. Traditional broadcasting, of course, was sharing a single program with lots and lots of people. 
And that's different now. Now we're sharing lots and lots of programs with just individual viewers and listeners. And not only do they want this stuff when they want to watch it or listen to it, but on a variety of um, different audio devices and different kinds of screens. Wow. And um, so the next team is going to be responsible for that and the leaders for that work is the next administration. Where is Cindy Spizzarni? Cindy! She's Way back Cindy. there, Cindy Spizzarni. Well, actually, you know what? I, I missed a part. Can I just go back one sentence? I mean, we, we can edit this, right? In post. <laughs> yep. um, so I'd like to introduce the new um, leadership team here at WQLN. And it's really a dream lineup. And, you know, I think that these are the right people in the right place at the right time. And when I think of these folks, I think of the 60 Pirates. I think of the cast of the very first Godfather film. I think of the original Broadway musical, South Pacific. Cindy, you're going to sing Valley High, right? Valley High! <laughs> anyway, our next president and CEO is Cindy Spazarni, and around here is Allison Amendola, our vice president for advancement. She's here somewhere. Um, Aaron is there somewhere. Um, he is our engineer. He's our vice president of engineering and multimedia, and it's going to be Aaron's burden that he's going to manage the digital transformation. So Aaron Cosio, yes. Allison Amendola, oh. there, right there, I see you, Yay. and Cindy Spazzarni. But they also have a new director of education, and ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that uh, Kathy Woodard has been breaking ground, not only here in Erie, Pennsylvania, but all across the state. I want to say thank you to all of our volunteers. We simply couldn't do all the things that we're able to do without all of your free, hard work. Thank you very much. But I also want to do a special thank you to our volunteer hosts. These talented artists create more original programming than any other local radio station in town. So whether it's from Next or Next to You, Sonic Sounds, or to This American Tapestry, no one comes close to touching our hosts encyclopedic com commentary or their craft as storytellers. If I had one regret in my life, it would be this. I was never cool enough to dress like Al Lubajewski, <laughs> talk like Aubrey Dillon, or stay up late the way that Gary Finney does. Or, best, where's Rob Hoff? Understand the, the very subtle similarities between jazz and hockey. Oh. My wife, Fran, will explain that a little bit later, right, Rob? <laughs> but as, as long as we're talking about Rob, Rob is about to begin his 51st year Woo! as a broadcaster. Woo! So, I mean, that's great, right? But to put it into some kind of context, he's already... Frank Martin, the morning mayor, is in Rob's rearview mirror. Nobody in this town has been on air as long, and I don't think there's anybody as talented as you, Rob. Yay. I just uh, think the world of you. Yeah. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Chris and Julie Moore, who are performing here tonight, um, they're in their third year of producing a, week, a weekly two-hour variety show. What were you thinking? <laughs> COVID. COVID had nothing to do. Folks, Erie, Pennsylvania, the Erie radio market is size 239. That means there are 238 markets that are bigger than Erie, Pennsylvania, and none of those um, stations in any of those 238 markets is able to do a weekly two hour variety program. Wow. In fact, the creator of the genre, American Public Media, they gave up on it years ago. Wow. Chris and Julie Moore, thank you so much. Yeah. And actually, how about a big round of applause for all these Hepcats, all of our volunteer hosts. Yeah. I want to send out a special thank you to our boards, both of our boards, both our boards of directors and our community advisory board. Um, and not just the current board members that are on that are serving right now, but all the past board members that are here tonight. You have all helped me in ways you'll never know or appreciate, but please know how grateful I am for your service. You know, governing, governing a community asset like WQLN is work. It's hard work for these board members. The most common question I get about WQLN is, 
Tom, I mean, that's not me talking, that's somebody else talking. <laughs> Tom, what's a typical board meeting like? And I answer, well, they're probably like most other nonprofit board meetings. We talk about Mini Coopers, we talk about sailing, we talk about pipe tools, especially those sexy pipe tool vices. I mean, ugh, there's nothing like that. We also talk about 5,000 year old Mesopotamian literature, and this is no lie. You can, the, our board minutes are public uh, um, property. Um, in the last two years, Gilgamesh and Enkidu have been mentioned no less than 14 separate times at WQLN board meetings. But still, there's one thing that we really talk about during our WQLN board meetings. It's the thing that has dominated every board meeting over the past three years, over the past three years. <clears throat> and that is the weekly, the weekly fecal chloroform counts from mm -hmm. Erie's wastewater treatment plant. Oh. Yay, Dr. Nadwarney. <laughs> Oh. If Howard Nadworney oh. is on your board <laughs> and there's a worldwide pandemic, do you think anybody really cares about what happens at the corner of Downton Abbey and Sesame Street? <laughs> I think the answer is no. Our board chair is John Bon Giovanni. Um, his vice chair is Glenn Holland. I, I saw Glenn. There, there's Glenn over there. Also the host of Saturday Night Movies. And their uh, secretary and treasurer is Howard Nadworny. And I didn't see Howard yet, but no. maybe he'll be here a little, little bit later. Our key eight, our community advisory board chair is Jeanette Schnars. And um, the secretary is Aaron. Where I saw Aaron. Oh, back there in the bathroom. <laughs> Let's wait. <laughs> Aaron Seacrest, thank you so much. Big round of applause for the governing board of WQLN. I want to thank, I also want to say thank you to all the former WQLN um, employees that are here tonight. Most of them have traveled some great distances. Just to mention a couple, Tracy Ferrier, she interviewed me for this job. Tracy, I still don't know what kind of tree I am, but once I get an answer to that question, you're going to be the first one that hears it. Um, classics host Wally Fawes is right here. Um, so when I was working over at JET, I listened to a lot of WQLN. Myron would get, um, I can't say that word, Myron would get upset. He would say, you know, Tom, we have a radio station, but I listen to a lot of the stuff. So when I met Wally for the first time, for me, it was like meeting Mick Jagger. <laughs> because because I listen to the show all the time. I said, you're Wally Foz. And so in his style, he said, I am. <laughs> well done. Lisa Canassi Halsey is here somewhere. I saw her. She is over there. I, you know, I should point out that Lisa is now vacationing from her first Florida hurricane. <laughs> and I'd also like to say, that I don't think that there has been another staff member here at WQLN that has put up with more shenanigans than that one right there. Um, Brady Lewis was going to be here tonight. I want to do a special shout out to him. I'm still going to do it because Brady was somebody that will always be a mentor to, to me and um, I wish him well with what he's going through right now. So thank you all to all the former employees that are here tonight. I also want to say thank you to the Erie's nonprofits. You folks continue, continue to inspire me every day, and you give me lots of great ideas, things to steal. Our Community Foundation is here tonight. I want to say thank you to them. They are more fun than, they are more attractive and more fun than any other community foundation in the country. I want to say thank you to Erie's Media, um, Erie's Media Community. Pam Forsyth is here. Somewhere she's back there. Yeah, Pam and, Pam and I are pulling the spring, string together. She's going to be retired in a couple of days. I want to say thank you to Tom Hagen. And if I may share a little story, um, a few years ago, we had a lot of programs that were duplicates on WQLN radio, and I changed the radio station. And Fran and I were at a first night Erie. And Tom, he came walking across the um, Erie Club's rotunda, you know, that big circular room. And he said to me, that new schedule, I don't like it. <laughs> I froze like a statue. I didn't move. In fact, I was there for about three days before Jeff from the Erie Club finally put a toga on me and covered me with flour and told everybody I was a statue on loan from the um, art museum. But seriously, um, Tom, I can't thank you enough. 
The trust that you put in WQLN is all the evidence that I need every single day to, when I go to work that I know that we're on the right track. Thank you very much. Is, is the mayor still here tonight? Yep, right here. Ah, mayor. Um, I've got a bit of a news, so as long as the TV cameras are moving, the mayor is here because by his executive order, he has just annexed Summit Township. So I would like to be the first one to say to all of you, welcome to Erie's seventh ward. Thank you, Mayor. Now we'll finally get some decent water. All we have is the sulfur-filled wells out here. Uh, my beautiful sisters, Linda and Molly, are here. Now, I was given strict advice not to use words like older or younger. But I can tell you that one of those sisters taught me the rosary, and the other one taught me how to duck out of church on Sunday. <laughs> I, or I could say that one of those sisters changed my diapers while the other one just gave me a box of Depends as a retirement present. <laughs> you can all figure that out for yourself. But my sisters, I have five sisters and nobody had a crew like this. They would sing all the jingles on my teenage radio station. My favorite was Peppermint is Good. I mean, how can you go wrong with something like that? But best of all was probably when they would sing um, the identification parts. W-N-E-W. -E this is the high note. Radio! <laughs> Thank you very much. This is where it all ended, right here on this stage. And of course, my longtime partner in crime, F. Rossini. Most of you know her as Saint Fran, or simply the Saint. And she is, but I'm telling you there's so much more. So if you could please follow me into the Wayback Machine for just a moment, I can explain why. Fran and I met almost a half century ago. She was working for a law firm in downtown Pittsburgh, dressed to the nines. She wore Yves Saint Laurent suits. She had Halston blouses. She would wear um, ostrich leather, leather burrow shoes. And I was an art student. I look more like an extra from the McKees Rocks High School school production of Hair. But anyway, <laughs> dating an art student isn't bad. And ladies, if you've never done dated an art student, just picture 1976, bell-bottom trousers, a CBGB t-shirt mm -hmm. with safety pins for no reason at all. Oh, and a pair of Jack Purcells. You have no idea what you missed. <laughs> Imagine the courage that Fran had to um, introduce her art student boyfriend to her parents. Or better yet, imagine the courage it took for her to introduce her art student boyfriend to her Greek father, Vesilios Agador Spartacus Rumilatus. <laughs> I am a witness to history, and I am here to tell you that Fran is more, in this, more than a saint. She is probably the most courageous person I've ever met. I was the, please. I was the first non-Greek to marry into her family, and much of my worldview was shaped by those good people. I learned a little Greek, mostly swear words that her cousins Nick and Nico taught me. They told me these were terms of endearment that I need to share with Yaya right away. I also learned to duck. And I also learned how to eat lamb without mint jelly. And there's a point to this story, but before I get to it, I think this may be a good time to apologize to my friends at um, um, WQED. Where are they? Right over there. So um, George, Mike, this all happened a long time ago, years before you were born. And none of this is in Pittsburgh East, so you're not going to understand it anyway. Um, Pittsburgh in the 1970s, in the words of the poet, was a true hellhole. It was Dante's fifth level of hell. And if you don't remember that level, or if you slept through Professor Tremont's explanation of Era lo loco ove sin della Riero, how'd I do on that, Glenn? <laughs> let, let me remind you, this was the level of the three burning rivers, the Styx, the, cry, the quiet riot, and the River Twisted Sister. This was also the level of all the closed steel mills, 14% unemployment, and billboards on Route 65 that read El Quella, Jaque, Pel, Caso, Nero, or into this black sulkiness, there is no joy. So Fran and I, remember Fran? 
<laughs> we were living in this closed steel, steel mill town, correctly pronounced still mill, still right? Mill. Still mill town, in the shadow of one of Pittsburgh's many penitentiaries when one day she took both of my hands into hers and she said, Ooh, take my hand, we're going out tonight to case the promised land. And we did, still holding hands. We hopped in our old 62 bug, a car that, if I remember to change the transmission fluid, had on most days two forward gears, sometimes three. And while still holding hands, we drove through the snow and the rain. We drove through the heat. We drove through the gloom of night. We drove all the way to the tippy top of Interstate 79. And here we found a place like no other place in the world, a town where every man, woman, and child was created just to make us feel both welcome and special. Birds were singing. Heck, people were singing. At, at the Holiday Inn South, Elvis was singing two, sh two shows a night. Um, Erie was, Erie's happiness was infectious. In those days, people used to bug State Street with dance steps that was right out of a Broadway musical. Erie was and remains a town of endless hope, sunshine, beaches, and exotic treats like Staganelli pepperoni balls. <laughs> buffalo, correctly pronounced Buffalo Road style chicken wings and five for a dollar Smith hot dogs with Greek sauce. The town we fell into was a town that time forgot where all the women are strong, all the men are good looking, and all the children are above average. What Fran and I found here was home. We made a home. We had babies. We raised those babies on Peaches, Sesame Street, and some of the old scripture songs. I'm going to tell Aunt May about Uncle John. Says he's got the blues, but he has a lot of fun. We sang, well, shake it up, baby, now. Shake it up, baby. We all go to the same church, don't we? We also sang the holiest of holy songs to those kids. But this was the song that God whispered in Moses' ear early on in Exodus. We sang, Louie, Louie, uh-oh, we got to go. ay 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 The kids we raised on those songs are here tonight. Alexa and Zach and their loves, Tom and Kelly over there. Thank you so much for being here. Today they live in their own eeries and they have as much fun as Fran and I had. They've made homes and they filled them with babies and lots of music. A day doesn't go by that our beautiful grandkids, Sophia. I'm not paying attention. So Sophia's in the woods. <laughs> that Sophia, Ava, and Eli don't amaze me and fill me with wonder. One of them is teaching me how to draw. One of them is teaching me how to fly kites. While the third one, well, he's trying to teach me how to speak cool like Aubrey Dillon. <laughs> More importantly, those three, wink and blinkin' and nods, remind me of how vitally important our work at WQLN is and how important it is that we continue into both a bright and digital future. So here I finish by saying adios, arrivederci, and au revoir, but never goodbye. Because like old Mr. Terminator, I'll be back, but this time as a volunteer. I wanna thank you all from the bottom of a very humble heart for this party, but also for being Eriites. Fran and I um, owe WQLN and Erie much, much more than we'll ever be able to repay. Thank you. Oh. All right, who doesn't have their champagne yet? Anybody need it. a glass of champagne? We got it. Because we're about to toast Tom New, not roast. So a little earlier today, I was walking down the hallway and Sorry. Shannon Farrar came up and said, Brian, would you like to give a toast to Tom New this evening? My response was absolutely not. <laughs> well, if you know Shannon, her reply was, Brian, you're giving a toast to Tom this afternoon. So I'd like to open with this. Tom, in your time here at WQLN, especially as CEO, you've driven your staff to consistently assess, evaluate, strive, think hard about their career choices. That's good, right? Really, that's, that's good. But all kidding aside, it's true that we never knew quite what to expect from you, be it a joke, a humorous outburst, a kind comment. But what we do know is that it was obvious how much you adored WQLN and your staff. 
You always brought a sunny disposition, <laughs> some positive energy to every event, pledge drive and auction, and our audience always appreciated that. Now, one more quick note. On my first day, you came to me and said, don't suck, you rat bastard. <laughs> Little did I know at the time that that was actually just a term of affection coming from Tom. And he uses that term rather freely as the staff here knows. <laughs> With that said, here's to you, Tom New. You've left an indelible mark upon the staff, the station, and the city. You will always be part of the WQLN family. And as you head off into the world of retirement, from all of us here at WQLN, we'd like to say, Fran, God bless your heart. <laughs> and Tom, enjoy your retirement, you rap bastard. <laughs> gonna get a hip hip <laughs> hip hip <Hooray>! hip hip <laughs> I didn't know this but apparently Chris and Julie wrote a special song birthday 50th birthday 40th I think I think so I actually said 30 but Come on, Tommy. We're losing daylight. <laughs> Saddle up your horse, Tommy. Grab your gun. It's time to ride. There's some bad guys waiting, but some good ones riding by your side. Gun in all the West, from Canada to Mexico. A silver star upon your vest says, Tommy, it's time to go. Saddle up your horse, Tommy, grab your gun, it's time to ride.
There's a woman who knows how you feel She's gonna give you lots of loving And fill you with 